Today we will do another variation on the Johnson-Jackson Pythagorean theorem proving c squared equals a squared plus b squared. And Johnson and Jackson use this typical waffle cone setup of similar triangles. And we have done all this setup before in my previous videos. I won't do that again, all these factors. Um, we have calculated u. 2abc over b squared minus a squared, and also v. Here's u, here's v. v consists of c plus w, and this w also requires a limiting process. And so overall, v is c times parentheses b squared plus a squared over b squared minus a squared. Okay, proof number one. And what we have is, here's our typical waffle cone setup, and we've calculated v, that's this overall distance consistent of c plus w, and also u. And these are the values that we've calculated previously. And now what we will do is, you see this line? Parallel lines, move it parallel such that it crosses this point right here. So we have similar triangles, and this angle here is beta minus alpha, same here, beta minus alpha. These are similar triangles. And if they're similar triangles, well, here's what we have. Uh, H is to U as C is to V. Okay, h is to u, a c is to v, saying h equals c times u over v. And of course, u over v is nothing more than the cosine of beta minus alpha, adjacent over hypotenuse, adjacent over hypotenuse. Okay, so crank that through, and it looks pretty messy, but these factors cancel out, and you're left with 2abc over b squared plus a squared. Pretty simple. And so that's looking at it from this uv point of view. Now let's look at it from the sine beta. Here's beta, and sine beta is opposite h over hypotenuse, 2a. Therefore, h is equal to 2a times sine beta. Well, we know what beta is. Beta is b over c. That's the basic definition of the sine of beta. And so if we uh, do this trick of multiply by c times over c, we get 2abc over c squared. Notice, these two entities, they're the same. The numerators are the same, therefore the denominators must be the same. Therefore, c squared is equal to b squared plus a squared. And proof number two. In proof two, we will uh, simplify things a little bit. And what we will do is instead of using this u and v business with the infinite process, we're going to use this distance d, and this is c minus d, okay? You see these two segments? From here to here is c. We call this d, so this must be c minus d, because c minus d plus d is equal to c. It all adds up. Basic algebra. And so let's look at this. Cosine of 2 alpha, that's d over c. Okay, so here's cosine of 2 alpha. Here's 2 alpha. And that's c. No, that's d over c. That's adjacent over hypotenuse. This is a right angle. So that's... One way to look at it is from this little triangle perspective. Cosine of 2 alpha. Alpha plus alpha is 2 alpha. Now, we can also use the double angle formula for cosine of uh, 2 alpha. That's cosine squared alpha minus sine squared alpha. And uh, 
So the basic ratio version of cosine is b over c, so it's cosine squared will be b squared over c squared minus a squared over c squared equals b squared minus a squared over c squared. Okay, those are the we leverage these two against each other, so therefore these two are equal, so we can set d over c is equal to b squared minus a squared over c squared, and then multiply through by c squared to get rid of the numerator, and you get cd is equal to b squared minus a squared. Okay, so that's kind of one half of it. And now, let's look at things from the uh, this section, the C minus D section. And we're saying cosine of beta, well, that's adjacent to C minus D, this segment, over 2A, which is the hypotenuse. This is a right triangle, so we can do that. And so C minus D over 2A, which is cosine of beta, but cosine of beta is also a over c. Remember, here's beta, here's adjacent over hypotenuse. So it's a over c. That's also the ratio. And so we crank through cross multiply and we get c squared minus cd is equal to 2a squared. Okay? And now Let's throw the CD on this side, but uh, look, we know that CD from previously calculating is B squared minus A squared, so you plug that in, you get B squared minus A squared plus 2A squared, which leaves C squared equals B squared plus A squared. <laughs> That's what we're trying to prove. So here is proof number three by YouTuber Tutor Terrific. And there we simplify matters even more. We start out with our basic A, B, C, right angle, and go from there. This has to be probably the simplest trigonometric proof. Um, so we have E segment, and then this is C. Well, this must be C minus E, because total you add this up, that adds up to C. Okay? So E equals A cosine B because cosine B is E over A or adjacent over hypotenuse. So when you crank that through, this equals A times A over C because cosine of B is also A over C adjacent over hypotenuse. So it's a squared over c. And crank through, eliminate the denominator ce equals a squared. Nice. Okay, now let's look at this segment, c minus e. What is that? Well, that's b cosine alpha, because cosine of alpha is CE adjacent over B, the hypotenuse. This is a right angle. And so C is B cosine alpha, but cosine alpha is B over C. Here's alpha, and then cosine alpha would be B over C, adjacent over hypotenuse. Similar triangles, that's what we're dealing with. So the whole thing is B squared over C. And so now, when you crank through, they eliminate the denominator, you get c squared minus ce is equal to b squared. But look, ce is equal to a squared, so c squared minus a squared equals b squared, giving us our famous c squared equals a squared plus b squared. I got this from YouTuber Tutor Terrific. I love this. This is probably the simplest trigonometric proof that I know of. So there you have it. We have uh, essentially these three proofs, and they're pretty straightforward. I like this one the best. Then uh, here are the other two proofs, and this is closer to what uh, Johnson and Jackson are doing. 
Um, this is a heavy, in my opinion, because uh, it requires this infinite process. That's calculus. But it is what it is. And so that's it. Thank you.